You turn around for one second and suddenly the world is filled with SUV-shaped pure electric cars. You've got the Volkswagen ID4, the Ford Mustang Mach-E, the Jaguar I-Pace, the MG ZS, maybe even the Mercedes EQC, the Audi e-tron, the Polestar 2. Okay, okay, I've got a point. Yeah, you do have a point. And now Lexus has gotten on the act with this, the UX300e. I know what you're thinking, it's an inspiring name that, but the UX is semi-familiar because it usually comes with a petrol engine. And this, well, it's basically just a five-seat small SUV hatchback with some zigzaggedy wheel arches and a lot of geometry in the design language. It looks like someone folded this entire car out of a giant piece of paper. But there's nothing actually wrong with that. I think it looks distinctive and it looks particularly good in bold colours. It's also a deliberate plan by Lexus because the UX generally is a car that's bought by younger people so they're less likely to be put off by battery power. In fact, Lexus's people call them creative urban explorers, though I do suspect their creative urban exploring possibly doesn't go much further than the world food aisle in Waitrose. In fact, the only way that you can tell that this car is electric are these sort of bespoke extra aerodynamic 17-inch wheels, a slightly more aerodynamic grille, and a massive great electric badge down the side. It's not a massive car, and notably less space efficient than some of its born-to-be EV competition. There's a reasonable boot with this underfloor storage, but the rear seats, well, they are a bit cramped if you're anything approaching tall, and the rear windows are on the small side. In fact, it's a good thing there are parking sensors and a reversing camera is standard on all models, because rear vision is limited. Blame the stylish kicked-up window line. It's comfortable enough up front, although I do wish this steering wheel had slightly more adjustment, because I, I sort of feel like it's pointing towards my belly. And I do like the fact that this is a traditional dash layout. There's not just some giant touchscreen that controls all of the functions. Although that does mean there are quite a lot of buttons, as well as this touchpad, trackpad thing here, and this little set of controls that's in the armrest. Now, this takes some getting used to, but it works really well when you do. One thing I have noticed, though, is that in the lower and mid-range specs, this car is a premium plus. You see this big screen here? Well, actually, the only bit that is a screen is this seven inch section. So it looks a little bit lost. You don't get the 10.3 inch screen that's a lot more fitted to that bit of dash until you get into the Takumi grade, which is over 50,000 pounds. And also the graphics, they look a bit late 2000s Game Boy. It's not as slick as some. As I said, this is a premium plus car and it gets LED headlights, it gets heated and cooled leather seats, a heated wheel, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, lots of little connections, there's a few different USB ports in here, plenty of things to keep you happy. Although, I did notice that you actually don't get sat-nav until you get to that really expensive Takumi grade car, which is a bit of an obvious admission. It's not so much of a problem because I use Apple CarPlay all the time, but I probably would expect it on a car worth 40 grand. The same practical theory seems to run through the whole concept. The hardware isn't game-changing. There's a 54.35 kilowatt hour battery pack under the floor driving a 201 brake horsepower electric motor that pushes through the front wheels only. It'll do approximately 3.6 to 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour in terms of efficiency and the WLTP figures, optimistic little digits that they are, reckon that's between 190 and 196 miles of range depending on what spec you have it in. If you accelerate from rest to 62 miles an hour, it'll take about seven and a half seconds, and there's a largely relevant 100 mile an hour top speed should you need it. Though it does feel quite a lot faster than that. And actually, if you pull away from a junction when it's even mildly damp, you will get a little scuff of wheel spin. You just adapt your driving style to, to suit it, but it is there. And do you know what? The more I drive this car, the more I think that all its various qualities just add up to a decent average. The same goes for the way it rides and handles. In town, it's quiet and it's supple and it feels really nice. And when you're out and about, it's flat enough. You know, it still picks up the odd bump and hump, but nothing too bad. It's just, it never feels one thing or the other. I mean, it's never sporty, even if you play with the modes and they're accessed by this little rotary control here, the sport, normal and eco. I just keep trying to pick on something, but there isn't really. It's fine. 
there are two ways to get regen braking. You can either pop it into B mode by pulling the gear stick, or you can play with it via these paddles behind the steering wheel. And there's four different modes, none of which allow you to drive this car as a one pedal car. And that always feels like a bit of a missed trick for me, especially with an electric car. I just keep thinking this car is like deliberately inoffensive. It's just not gonna shock you. But I think that's the point of the UX300E because what it does really well is be a decent Lexus. It's comfortable, it's quiet, you can thank the acoustic glass and extra insulation for that. And what it does is it, it just, it's comforting. It won't shock any Lexus owners, that's for sure. It's also easy to choose. There are just three variants, UX300E, then there's a car like this, Premium Plus Pack, and top spec Takumi grade that comes with all the bells and whistles. It should be easy to charge. There's a Europe-wide deal with digital charging solutions and a comforting hug of reliability. Lexus is really rather good at that. Charging itself is average. A full charge on a home wall box, where Lexus says most of its customers will get their power, will take about eight and a half hours, with an out and about rapid charge taking just 50 minutes from zero to 80%, though exactly no one with an electric car arrives at a charging point with 0% range. It's also wise to note that the UX300E also only comes with a 50 kilowatt onboard charger, so you can't use any really fast charging points. And it's got a Chadamo charger, which is just a bit odd these days. I think the problem here is that you remember all those electric SUVs that we mentioned at the start? Well, a lot of them were designed from the outset to be purely electric rather than being adapted from a car that also burns liquid fuel. And that means that they tend to have bigger batteries, more range, be more space efficient, and quite a few of them are a little bit cheaper. Now, Lexus would argue that the UX300E actually doesn't compete with most of them because it's a more premium product and it battles more with cars like the Tesla Model 3 or the Polestar 2. But I'm not sure it's enough to sway me. I think for a car of this size, for £40,000 plus, I'd expect my range to at least start with a 2. As ever, if you want to know more about the UX300E or any of its competition, then please do log on to electrifying.com and we'll attempt to make sense of it all for you. Well, not everything, but at least the bits that relate to buying a car featuring a plug.